Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Vention's Design Tips webinar. And today we'll be covering how to simulate code-free automation sequences in the cloud. I'm Jennifer Sewell, Marketing Director at Vention, and with me I have Emily Pimentel, who's the Application Specialist. Um, in this webinar, we're going to walk you through how to create automation sequences in a code-free environment, how to validate your design sequence and functionality, how to simulate your application cycle in real time using Machine Builder, and finally, how to push your program directly to your machine. So without further ado, I will hand you off to Emily. Thank you, Jen, for that introduction. Just want to extend a warm welcome to those joining Avention webinar for the first time, and a welcome back to those who have tuned in to previous webinars. So what I'm gonna to do today is give you a basic overview of machine logic, which is a powerful tool to be used with machine motion. And what I wanna do is give you guys a little bit of context, a little bit of color. What is machine motion? Machine motion is a plug and play, single box controller that includes everything you need for motion control, meaning stepper motor drives, power supply, control card, safety relay, to name a few. These components are all integrated into a complete system, providing a true plug and play experience. Now, part of what that means is that there's no need to program in traditional programming languages, such as Python or C++, as we take care of that for you with machine logic. However, if you do have a very customized application that requires more extensive programming, you're free to do so using our Python SDK, and we have the available resources online for you to get you started. And what we did as a result is that we developed an intuitive, easy to use interface that you can use to virtually simulate your application in a 3D environment in a 3D space. And from this, you can actually extract some very useful information, such as cycle time. So as opposed to, as opposed to going through the traditional steps of designing, commissioning, assembling, and testing, once you simulate this cycle time in your 3D environment, you can then very easily make the according design changes. For the purposes of this webinar, we're going to configure a design that was pre-prepared that I thought would be a good example to share with you today. So the first thing that I'd like to highlight is that in order to unlock the machine logic portion of Machine Builder, you need to include a machine motion control box in your design, as I've done so here, highlighted in green. After you do that, you can then click on the machine logic icon on the right, prompting a window to open. In this window, you'll notice three main sections, configuration, application, and sequence. In the configuration section is where you would identify each axis, actuator, automated component, assign a name, and the corresponding home and end stop sensors. In the application section is where you would store a sequence or a series of sequences catered to a specific need. In the main sequence section is where you would identify every motion or define every movement of your application. Now, before I go into configuring each axis, I just want to give you a walkthrough of the flow of the application. And this looks like a typical application for pick and place. I'm gonna leave it up to you to imagine certain details, such as the parts that we're picking up or exactly how they would be held on the rotating platform. Really, the aim of this is to give you a general idea of where, the parts, are, where parts are being fed from a conveyor, placed on a rotating platform, shown here, then inspected at the first station by a universal robot, rotated a second time where they are inspected or finally sorted by the second universal robot with integrated vision systems. So really, we're gonna keep it to the essentials. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna walk you through configuring each axis. So once you open the machine logic window in the configuration section, you can select this option called add new axis. 
Once you do so, you'll see that you're able to assign a name and you'll see the type of, of actuator that you would like to configure. I just wanna highlight that if you select ball screw, pneumatic, or rack and pinion, you'll notice that no actuators populate in this window over here. And that is because I don't have any, or there are none that exist in this specific design. Once we go to belt actuator, you'll see that two actuators populate. Now, once you highlight your cursor over each check window, you'll notice that, that the corresponding actuator will highlight. In my case, I'd like to define the first actuator to be the x-axis, and I will hover my cursor over the actuator that I'd like to select. I'll confirm it with it being highlighted in green, and then I'll go ahead and select it. Now, something that I want to show you today is an alternative way to, to assign the, the appropriate home and end stop sensors. As you can see here, we have several to choose from. And an easier way to do that, that I thought would be good to share with you, is to open the design structure, which is at the bottom, which looks like a little tree icon. Once you do that, you'll see that you have the option to expand the parts that are being called in the bill of materials. And then once I'd like to select the homing sensor, I can just click on it, the design, tree will automatically scroll to that homing sensor and then I can then drag and drop into the into the the homing sensor box similarly I can do this for the end stop sensor as well now I'm going to go ahead and configure the remaining two axes so this one will be the y-axis I will hover my cursor over the one that I'd like to be the y-axis and then I'll go ahead and do the same thing, drag and drop, select the part. It will automatically scroll, and then I can drag and drop it into the homing or end stop sensor. The third axis, I'd like it. We, I know that I have an indexer in this design. I'll go ahead and select it. I'll call it rotating platform. There is only one indexer in this design, so I'll go ahead and select that one. And then I'll assign the appropriate homing sensor. So I know now that we have assigned four of the sensors. The only remaining one is 2334, which is the sensor ID. I can go ahead and select it. You'll notice that the part tree automatically scroll to that as well, and that it is highlighted in green. Now, once I go to the application, you can also assign a name as you wish. And in this application, you then would have a main sequence. You can also have child sequences that you can additionally define as a sequence that would run through one time, loop, or forever. Alternatively, you can define every single movement in the main sequence over here. That is a personal preference. Now I'd like to take you to the second design or the second version of the design rather, where I have the sequence pre-prepared. It's important to note that you, should, that you should start every sequence with a homing function over here. And, and that occurs when you add the motion. And then from the dropdown, you can select home and then select the axis to do so. This is important because every movement will be absolute or relative to that homing sensor that you've, de that you've predefined in your configuration section over here. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and play the sequence. We're then gonna see the application be simulated in a code-free environment in our 3D space. Something that I thought would be useful to highlight is that you can also set the acceleration. If, if the acceleration is not set, then it will use the standard predefined acceleration and speed values. 
once you set an acceleration, so for example, I'd like, to, I'd like the rotating platform to accelerate at 50 millimeters per second squared. You would have to define that motion just before you define the move or motion command to rotate the platform to your desired angle. Once you define that motion, it is important to note that every subsequent motion that you define will, will move with the, with, the, um, with the configured acceleration. So for example, if I set the acceleration of the rotating platform to be 50 millimeters per second squared, and then I didn't define it again to be 300 millimeters per second squared, the movements that I call for the X and Y axes being the belt actuators will still move at 50 millimeters per second squared. Another thing I wanted to show you is that you can also configure your master sequence as a series of child sequences over here. So what I have in my master sequence is I have execute commands that will then execute every subsequent sequence that I've predefined already. So in, in, this, in this application over here, I have a homing sequence. And in this homing sequence, I have three defined moves, home Y, home X, and home the rotating platform. In this sequence over here is where I would define the movement of the rotating platform to the first pick and play station. Over here, what makes this two times pick and place sequence a little bit different is that I've defined it as a loop with the count of two, assuming that I would, I would place two parts on the rotating platform at a time. And then in the second sequence, in the, in the station two sequence is where we would then finally move the rotating platform to the second station where there is a universal robot waiting for it with an integrated integration vision system that will then finally sort the application. So this ultimately is a personal preference. I prefer doing it this way because then I can, it's easier to debug if there are less movements that you're defining per sequence and you can see where, where you might have an issue or a problem that you can then resolve. And that is what I wanted to share with you today. So thank you for your time. Thank you for that, Emily. That was uh, short and sweet, but I, I think it was super helpful. And I, I think our, our viewers tend to agree because we've got a slew of questions coming in here. Um, bear with me, I'm trying to clump them into themes because we do have a few recurring questions. But the first one, which seemed to, to come up quite often is whether it's possible to control more than three axes using machine logic. That's an excellent question, Jen. So um, as of right now, it is not possible to control more than than three axes using machine logic. However, it is possible to do that using uh, our Python SDK. Um, however, it is still on the roadmap. So we are working to make it possible to control more than three axes using machine logic. Okay. Uh, this one perhaps builds off the previous one because it's about control again. And um, Samantha would like to understand whether it's possible to control two machine motion controllers at the same time. So yes, it is possible to control uh, two machine motion controllers at the same time through our Python programming. And we have the uh, resources available online to help you with that. Or alternatively, if you're using a universal robot, you could do so as well with the URCAP software. Okay. I really like the next question, actually. So we talk a lot about um, being an integrated solution in that we kind of are uh, across multiple industries, be it CAD, PLC, and so on. So somebody would like to understand whether we, it's possible to connect Vention's machine motion controller to a PLC. Perfect. Yes, that's a question that we get a lot as well. So yes, it is possible. You either using the 24 volt digital uh, I.O., so digital input output module that we have, or uh, using, you would have to then uh, as well use the uh, machine motion low level socket API. Okay, thank you. Uh, we always get these certification questions, but uh, I, they're important, I think. Somebody I think would like so to too. understand whether machine motion controller is CE certified. 
perfect. So the critical components of the machine motion controller are CE or UL certified. And additionally, we also provide document, documentation packages upon request. Okay, thank you. And finally, uh, somebody would like to understand, does machine motion support Profibus or Profinet? That's a great question. That is, um, so as of right now, not yet, although it is on the roadmap for machine motion to eventually be able to support Profibus or Profinet. Okay, thank you, Emily. I, uh, I would like to thank you again for hosting this webinar. I thought it was particularly interesting, especially uh, given that you're a power user. So you sharing some power user tips throughout the webinar, I hope our, uh, our viewers found that equally as uh, entertaining and useful as I did. Um, I would like to thank all of our viewers again for taking their time to join us on this busy afternoon. And we will be sharing a version of the recording after this webinar. Thank you everyone and have a great afternoon. Thank you.